Okay, um, as we all know, and we also heard it in the Senate um, with Senator Annie Marcos, and I, I have to also um, say hello to Mrs. Rogando here. I think I also heard you say this. Um, China, as we heard earlier, has been focusing on development. It's development of their country, welfare of the people, and the people across the region. I feel like, it is my understanding, that they have been this way, as history has also shown us. On the other end, the other side, always um, cites humanitarian reasons, disaster risk reduction, right? So, again, where do Filipinos position themselves with this? Maybe Sas, you can say Sasro Gato Sasso, just a bit of a background, uh, studied got her master's and taught in a Maastricht University uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, she has uh, over a million followers on Facebook and uh, she was invited by uh, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee uh, to be a resource expert uh, on EDCA and uh, our national security uh, agencies also consult her as a uh, a civilian advisor. Uh, but uh, before I give her the mic, uh, we want to shift also after this to the uh, press con of uh, Li Chiang and uh, uh, President uh, Xi Jinping's uh, uh, speech no, on the closing of the National People's Congress. So I, I think actually that was a good question on uh, the other uh, aspects that we can uh, link and capitalize on China's economic reforms. Thank you. Hello, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Sas. I think, uh, well, what I noticed is that there's just so much um, ambiguities and lack of clarity of what's actually happening in our region. Actually, um, uh, last week I, I, I met, well, not just me, but several of us. Um, uh, on social media, met uh, Senator Ivy. I actually asked her, um, ma'am, can you please hold a Senate hearing on the security situation of our region? Because it's not really being talked about <coughs> in mainstream media. So what, what we're seeing right now are a lot of, a lot of um, the hot truths and really, really poor um, analysis. And um, misinformation about what's going on. <clears throat> For example, uh, the Taiwan issue. But, you know, Taiwan is part of China. You know, it's part of the territory of China. And we've always known that for a long time. Even the United States, in its um, uh, policy towards China, uh, towards Taiwan, it recognized, it says that it will never recognize the independence of Taiwan. So if it's like Taiwan is not independent, what is it? You know, I, I think we should start asking um, American officials when they come here in our country, especially our media, but what I know is, is that nobody's really asking them and to clarify, you know, these ambiguous and um, not there and not here, you know, pronouncements. And then second, about the question of, of the media, where do we place our, ourselves here? I think, I think, you know, I, I, I want to be optimistic, but I think I'm more becoming pessimistic by the day. Uh, I don't think um, we have much say anymore about what's going on in, in terms of uh, We'll have the speakers stand up because the media in the back are, it's difficult for them to see. Uh, we'll ask the speakers to stand up. Yeah, I think, yeah. Thank you, thank you. No, I think we don't have much say anymore because when, when you have foreign bases in your country, it means that you have already surrendered a lot of uh, a lot of room for maneuver for your foreign policy. You know, even even our friends from China uh, know this because they have been colonized and occupied by different powers in their history. That's why they don't they will not allow any foreign powers occupying their territory because they know that when foreign powers occupy your territory, that you know, you're surrendering something to them already. 
Okay, and then, so, so, uh, where, where do we position ourselves here? I think we will have to go back to the original foreign policy of the president, which was a mere continuation of the, the previous president, President Duterte, friend to all and we do not. And in world history, have we, the United States had that foreign policy before. Before it launched its imperial war in 1898. Because before the United States was just a neutral power. So what did they do, the United States, during their um, that long history? They just traded with everyone. You know, they didn't side with the foreign powers um, quarreling in Europe. But now, you know, we, we, we wanted to it's have the treaty kind of foreign West policy. Yeah. But we are not being able to fully realize it because the United States is always there behind our back and, you know, directing, um, directing our, our, our policy as their little brown brother. I think it's not a secret, and I think even um, Senator Tata will know this, that the United States has a really huge influence in our military and foreign policy establishment. That's an open secret. Okay, okay uh, we will get back on the foreign policy front. Uh, we wanted to uh, uh, return to the economic and development. Uh, and of course, if you want to follow more, uh, SAS is uh, very active on social media, a uh, follow for the motherland. And it was interesting because uh, Senator Quintana told me he was reading uh, SAS's uh, blogs, and blogs was actually reading uh, Senator Quintana's uh, uh, articles. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, knowledge has no age limit, uh, and uh, we hope to learn from uh, everybody. Uh, going back to uh, Pia's question earlier, uh, Li Xiang uh, mentioned several fronts where it will focus on technology, innovation, uh, academic, uh, and people-to-people uh, uh, -people development. Um, we want to go back to that uh, on, on how, what are the challenges do you see uh, China faces? Uh, in achieving this, uh, given the geopolitical, and uh, there's also a population uh, uh, demographic uh, situation in China, there's uh, environmental issues. Uh, Mr. George C., uh, or uh, any of our experts, uh, Senator Kintata, you directly engage with uh, a Chinese uh, in your uh, term as a minister. Uh, can you share some of your uh, experiences? You were mentioning before that uh, Philippines was actually one of the first, if not the first, ASEAN country to recognize a PRC. Yes, can you share a bit of that? Uh, we also have uh, some of our diplomat friends here. I don't know if they're allowed to share. Uh, we, we also uh, advocate our ASEAN cooperation, so we can uh, discuss that as well. Go ahead. The largest, most populated country in the world. The, uh, the demographic transition was uh, in kind of favor. Uh, today, I think uh, one problem of China is uh, the, <coughs> the decline in age uh, group. So, that's why the robotics happens yes, and multiplies. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, for, uh, since uh, the time of uh, Robert Malthus, we have been engaged in this debate. Uh, how can the world continue to grow uh, if so uh, many people are falling uh, from the ranks to death and uh, we were being bothered by the theory of overpopulation for so long. And, uh, because we are so positive overpopulated, uh, we could not uh, solve our pro poverty problems. Now this is reversed. Uh, book by Philip Boring uh, tells us that we are uh, on the sunnier side of life because we have a much younger population. The median age is 23, 0.76 something. Well, China, despite of its 1.4 billion people, so many are old, and 
not only China, uh, Japan and uh, uh, Asian, East Asian neighbors. Yes. Demographic dividends, can the Philippines uh, capitalize on our demographic dividends and uh, maybe uh, opportunities? Uh, the demographic uh, opportunities is in two directions. One is uh, in several directions, in two directions primarily. All our East Asian neighbors are aging. But why do we have to keep sending our nurses and workers abroad? Don't we have the capacity to build if Taiwan could do it, if Singapore can do it, why can't we do it? That's because partly I think our legislators have to understand business because they're trying to protect yeah. the local professions, but they're actually hurting the overall system. So we can be bringing them here or we can be sending our people outside. Better to bring them here, number one. Number two is the uh, young people coming up and becoming wealthier something that business has to understand and the Filipinos have to understand is that uh, people are willing to spend more on what they like than what they need. They don't spend on like the our maids before, they do not spend on that. They say they don't have money for their brothers and sisters to study, but they have money to vote on their cell phone and for their cell phone every month, right? So. This is uh, something true. They will spend on what they need when they're about to die. They will spend all the money on medicine. But what they need to study, to discipline, what it is not where what people spend. They will spend on their pleasure. So they will spend more on that music, on that pleasure, on that concert, on that boyfriend, on that boyfriend. So that's another big opportunity because Filipinos are such good entertainers. So we can be providing that. But then again, we have to make the laws and the logistics possible for it. So these are two possible demographic dividends for the face, not just in, in Asia, but also around the world. Okay. Thank you. We'll go back to that on RCEP. Uh, how can we uh, take advantage of RCEP? Uh, uh, first, the uh, education and technology sector. Uh, no, no, uh, education. I'll, I'll go back to that. Okay. Uh, uh, the education want, sector. I just want to continue what uh, Senator Tata said and uh, uh, Sir uh, Percy. Actually, yes, uh, the, population, the population is very young and we see a great potential. Unfortunately, uh, we keep on sending uh, uh, workers, scholars abroad, but the problem is how can we keep them come back here in the Philippines and serve the country? That's the biggest challenge. Yes, uh, we, are, we keep encouraging those people to come back. Unfortunately, do we have enough support system to provide for them? Yeah. That's a big question mark. Another thing is China, Japan, South Korea, they're aging population. So why not capitalize on the human resource of the Philippines, not just sending Filipinos to serve as global state? We need to keep them here, and we need to keep um, enough support system for them. It's not just trying to encourage them to, okay, come back and serve her here. Unfortunately, there are many scholars who want to be here, but they feel marginalized and devalued. How can we address this kind of issue when it comes to serving the scholars in their country? Well, we are the largest uh, you know, uh, population using the social media like Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and we learn so much Number from- Number one experience. user of porn, according to Pornhub. I don't know about <laughs> So what, 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 what's the benefit of having this 
all these kind of advantages and disadvantages. I think we need to look for how can we take advantage of a lot of opportunities coming from the outside and coming from the inside. I think uh, I'll agree. And also the disaster risk reduction. In 2022, we are top one. First, the top country when it comes to disaster. So what we are doing now? Disaster is a very problem. It's not just a, it's not just a political, but at the very most, it's a very economic problem. We are not doing well when it comes to economy because we are around one. We experienced pandemic and on top of the pandemic, volcanic eruption, typhoon, earthquake, and everything. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to that. Uh, Another because, issue uh, so, to, to, to look into. Thank uh, you. We'll go back. Uh, but just to, to add, no, uh, we also give credit where credit is due. Uh, the Philippine government also had a very recently successful Balik scientist program where uh, I, I know personally uh, friends from abroad returned uh, because they saw the economic uh, dynamism that was happening uh, in the Philippines, number one. In UP, uh, uh, UP Diliman, there was also a build, build, build. So I was there for six years. Like overstay kasi tayo, masyado na enjoy uh, But uh, I, I hardly see one or two buildings uh, being uh, built. But in the last six years, every block in the University of the Philippines, Liriman, uh, had a new building uh, set up. No? So I think there are uh, these opportunities coming. No? So we want to... Uh, uh, get, get, I just, I just yeah. want to answer the, the, you know, the Bali Scientist issue. Yes, they, they're very, they, they really want to serve. Unfortunately, when it comes to technology, they don't have a limited technology to use here in the Philippines. I hope we can get those kind of technology that our Balik scientists could use here in the Philippines. You know? Well, uh, we know China and our friends uh, from uh, ASEAN, Singapore, Balik and Indonesia, si Mame. are also uh, ready to help. Uh, go ahead, uh, 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 Ira. Uh, can you also sign it up a little bit with uh, technology, maybe ARTA? Uh, what were the business challenges? And then we'll go to the end. I have to say it. Okay. Um, just, to give them, just to give everybody the direction. China also says that they, they are trying to put policies in place. I think this is where we should start if you're going to go into the ARTA and all these things. What kind of policies are we looking into in the next, let's say, five years? Right? This is very, very important. Well, another thing they're saying is that they have a very strong developmental foundation. Mm. We're talking technology, we're talking education. Mm. So the Chinese economy in that sense, because of all that, is stabilizing. Yeah, exactly. They are saying that. That's what they were saying earlier, right? So when it comes to the young people, again, technology and education, just to put everything into perspective before we get into this, because we need the policies that will set the direction, okay? They're saying that the young people are entering into the workforce, you know, with talent, a lot of talent, and a lot of development in the making. So, when it comes to education and technology, how do you see development in terms of connections, okay? You have to look at that because education plays a very important role in bilateral relations, right? So again, we have the values, we have the skills, and possibly, maybe because in terms of technology as well, we can look at joint educational training. So before we go into this, are the policies. Uh, great question. You, you want to add or? Yeah, 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 I just want to you know, uh, make it more. Yeah. Just a while back, we had a brownout. Just a while back, we had a brownout. <laughs> we, we encourage uh, my scientists to come here. But when the first problem is energy, what do you want? We want to encourage foreign methods to come in. And yet, uh, we have the, so far the highest energy price. Higher yes. than Japan. How can we move economically when we have this thing? <laughs> Disclaimer we have government people watching you uh, via Zoom. No? Um, <laughs> The first question was there something about development, uh, sorry, demographic dividend. And this is probably a more business minded approach, but I would hope that the Philippines, as a friend to all, enemy to none, 
would try to engage all countries, especially China, in that sort of sense. Before China really opened up, um, the test market for Western products and services was Hong Kong to see if it would succeed and then they would enter if allowed them to prosper within mainland China. Now that China is facing so many other um, external factors in terms of their technology, their products, their services, their softwares, I would invite them to do the reverse with the field. In our 700, uh, sorry, 110 million people, the largest number of social media users on Facebook, spends more time online than any other nationality in the world. Use us, engage with us as your testing center before you launch your new softwares, your new AIs to the rest of the Western world. Why? We're still Asians at heart. We're still geographically very strategic in terms of where the Philippines is located, Pearl of the Orient, whatever, whatever. We're still Asians, but we have that long-standing cultural Western um, indoctrination. Our educational system, our form of government is still very Westernized. Uh, policy linkages. Policy linkages. Well, you were saying how to get them back to the Philippines. Well, the yeah, easiest way to do it. Yeah. The what, what, way, do we need? what do we need uh, in policy terms to take advantage of what's happening in Asia? We still need more of our talent to learn from the best practices overseas. And the easiest way to make sure they come back is to put it in the scholarship application contract, what they did with me after Xi Jinping, after Hong Kong, Singapore, the US. You have to stay in the Philippines for a period of what? Otherwise, we'll pay back what they spent on you. But the question is, that's just one person, that's just me. What about everybody else who has Then there's a need for more opportunities, for more talent to study overseas. And that's the only way to do it. To make sure that they contribute. Well, you cannot force them to work in a certain industry, but you force them to come back to the uh, just to add a uh, plug in, uh, Philippines China Friendship Club uh, is a club uh, founded by Filipinos who are studying in the top universities in China. And uh, when Dr. Arlene and myself and Rafael were there, uh, we were in programs that were completely taught in English. Our classmates were from Europe, from, from the US, from, from uh, Southeast Asian uh, countries, and many African countries also. You know, uh, it's interesting because. Uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand had thousands of students uh, studying all over China. The Filipinos, we had about 100. You know, so, so, uh, 300 in the whole China. No? But in Beijing alone, Thailand had thousands of uh, Thai students. So uh, there's a lot of uh, catching up. Uh, but uh, we also uh, help not only on uh, research and uh, studies, but we also help on, uh, on the ground. Uh, so uh, we uh, did a talk with the TikTok. And they actually said that you know in the Philippines most of our uh, users are uh, interested in entertainment, in uh, sexy ladies. But in Indonesia, in Singapore, uh, in uh, other countries, uh, they use it for educational purposes, uh, learning skills, you know, learning learning how to do things. Uh, so that's an, an interesting uh, trend also. So uh, we'll go to uh, Mr. George. See, uh, maybe to connect to RCEP. Uh, RCEP. Uh it's actually difficult because the government is not necessarily wrong. Uh, I'd like to backtrack a bit. In terms of bringing the students back home, first we have to give them opportunities to study and experience abroad. Uh, that is not as necessary today because they can see everything that they need to see. They can get the best instruction in the world through YouTube and through so it's not as important. But if given the opportunity to study abroad and you have a contract for them to come back, then uh, that's good if they follow it for, for two, three years. And then they have to go where they make the best income and then the best opportunity to learn more. So what we really need is more entrepreneurship, you know, whether by those people who are studying or by others, to create sufficient income here na lumaki ang negosyo enough that they can have a fighting chance in terms of income and lifestyle if they stay here. Without that entrepreneurship, 
uh, people will always keep going abroad. No, yung RCEP, the RCEP, the having been manufacturing, manufacturing and trading ourselves, it is, uh, you have to be open to it if you are at least attaining a certain, uh, certain uh, efficiency. You don't have to be the most efficient. So if we are a purely consumer society, if you open to RCEP, it is going to damage our country. I mean, I am a promoter of RCEP, but we have to be practical. You don't have to be the best. You have a certain level. You have a value added. You can capture part of the production chain. It doesn't have to be manufacturing. Maybe you have manufacturers and you capture the tourism side of the business or the education or the medical services side of the chain. Then open up. But if you don't have, if you don't have that ability, then you spend time and build up your capability. This, this open marketing is a nonsense. No country, no country in the world except Singapore maybe and Hong Kong built up their economy through an open market. None. Everybody started up by protecting their market. Everybody. No, so this is total nonsense. That you study abroad, they'll teach you that in the US. It's not true. Give a single example, it's not. So, but, but if you're a country that uh, is not going to be able, because we have been in manufacture, we've been manufacturing in different countries though, so we understand what happens. We, we, you know, the Philippines used to be the number one investor in Taiwan. You know? When Taiwan was not uh, not industrialized, it was Japan and then and then uh, the Chinese from the Philippines. So, if we can build that, if we cannot build that, then we should open up soon because then maybe some people can think of how to convert the opportunities. Because if you don't have cheap inputs, you cannot do outputs. Then you're not competitive. If, meaning, if, you're, if your child, you want them to become a doctor, maybe you tell them to spend three or four years, they might get convinced. But if they're never going to be convinced anyway, just let them go early. Uh, uh, they'll find their place. Mr. George, one question was on the power, uh, the high prices of power. Can we yes, we cannot do anything about it anymore because it's not in the Philippine culture to correct it. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's never going to happen. You keep hoping it will never happen. But there are areas that you don't need high power costs. The world is open today. As I said, entertainment. You know how much the tickets they're spending per ticket for those foreign entertainers. The concerts, the concerts, they're spending from 50 to 100,000 per ticket. True. In the Philippines. Foreign and when you perform in Singapore or in Thailand, it is only half the cost. Yeah. So it makes sense too. So that is, this is what our culture, that our people are spending money on things they have pleasure in, not what we need. Are you going to try to change the culture? Just use the culture. Don't change it. Forget it. Uh, we have about 10-15 minutes to go. Uh, we've already overextended our time. We will continue. Uh, this is an ongoing series, no? and we are also working with other uh, uh, topics, uh, including uh, culture, society, and uh, technology as well. Uh, please. Uh, good afternoon. Chris Chris Moore from the News Agency. Um, uh, the top agenda of the new Chinese here is to the China's economic recovery from the pandemic. So how can the Philippines ride on that uh, economic recovery of China? And what are the opportunities for the Philippines, especially the low-hanging foods? Anyone? Well, if, if the people... The, the people... You have to immerse in the market you want to do. So that's part of the entrepreneurial culture. If we think we're going to sell to Japan, but everyone is now going to visit in Japan because it's so cheap now, right? So if they spend time in Japan, are you going to sell something to Japan? I don't know. No. So there are many good items we can sell to China. For instance, how we have, people have to spend time learning how they're going to sell to China. So we are going to say, here for instance, you have to go to trading groups first, because unless you have a big... Uh, organization. You go there and open your company and then you refile all the papers and everything. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. It might be easier for you to go around Southeast Asia. So to Southeast Asia. So we do what's practical. We have an objective. And then from there we go. So for instance here, 
we are doing trading. We trade through traders here that trade in Southeast Asia. Uh, they take care of those with relations with China, in Thailand, or Malaysia. They're the ones who bring our goods to China. Otherwise, we have to spend millions and millions and don't know how to. They already have the distribution. So the model which you use, whether for education or for business or for life, you have to have viable models. We have to be studying that. We're not studying that. We're studying how to dance and how to sing and how to. I mean, it's fun, and we can make a business out of it. But if you're not making a business out of it, then these are ways. You know, there, there are the low hanging fruit is one is fruits. The China is buying so much fruit. Uh, durian, they're buying, buying hundreds of billions of dollars of durian from Vietnam and Thailand. From Vietnam, hundreds of millions of dollars. And why are the Filipinos not organizing? They are willing to buy more bananas. Why are there no increase in banana plantations? Because we have land reform. Because we have land reform. So there are many things we have to take care of. The laws and the we, we also have a policy and a national legislation uh, talks, no? so we can engage with our partners as well there. Uh, going back, uh, Mr. George, you had a recent article on the benefits that uh, we gained from China in the last six years of Duterte's independent foreign policy, because there's still many experts, experts, quote unquote, saying uh, you know, maybe Duterte was, was uh, uh, a, a fool, a fast one. Uh, can you give us some of the benefits? Uh, there, there, are, there are the obvious benefits. No? Uh, there are very clear ones. Those who travel in the country, you see all those roads and bridges. Those roads and bridges allow malls and stores and fast foods to be created all over the country. It used to be only the urban centers. That made everyone benefit from the increase in land prices. Every single person of your family, everywhere. At least double triples. That means the value of the Philippines went up at least two to three times on the year. Number two, that road made us viable. We're being considered as manufacturing again because at least it made us the logistics viable again. Not very good, but viable. Why do I say not very good? We are we are practitioners in manufacturing. If you are in a Vietnam, you can make five trips a day. In the Philippines, on a bad day, you can make only one trucking trip a day. Usually two, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. So how many trips can you make? So it, that many trips tells you if you open a factory, how many turnarounds you can make, how many visitors you can have. So because of that logistic, that makes the Japanese rail worth it. But that Japanese rail, uh, that girl was just asking me or somebody again, they don't understand. No? Oh, Japan has only half a percent interest. Half a percent interest versus 2% of China at the time, versus 4% from the World Bank in the U.S. But that half a percent, but the price is more than double of the Chinese rail. So I give you a very cheap interest, but I give you a very high price. So we are so smart, right? We have so many finance people, but uh, they are not explaining this uh, difference to us. And yeah, so you have to understand uh, things are interrelated. Uh, so that's one. And the other is uh, China gave us arms in the ISIS rebellion yeah. when the U.S. blocked it. If not, we could be one of those countries 20 years at war, right? Uh, during the pandemic, they gave us vaccines when the U.S. banned vaccines from anywhere in the world. They banned the ex export. And even the raw materials they banned. They came in with the vaccines only five months later. And that vaccine was about to expire already, right? So, and then there are also the, the if you notice during the pandemic period, we had the uh, uh, Wi-Fi, the work from home. We could do that work from home because when Duterte came in, remember, he threatened Globe and PLDP. Yeah. If you don't shape up a shop, and then if you check, both of them are using 90% Chinese companies to put up the power. powers. And they try to hire as many as they can. And so in that six years, the coverage more, the coverage, that's the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> the coverage more than double, and the speed more than double. If you notice your cell phones keep getting uh, uh, before, but now it's not, it's hardly as much. So that's part of the infrastructure put up by Chinese. And when they put up that infrastructure, the companies told us they wanted to hire more Filipino engineers, but they couldn't get enough. Even if they hired, it takes them two years to train. That means our curriculum is not fit. Yeah. 
it takes them two years to train. So, uh, so we could have done even faster if we had the people. So there's so many opportunities. I think that's enough to say uh, that when people are saying that investments are not coming in or the help is not coming in, they keep blocking. The same people who ask the questions will ask again. They're not taking down the notes. So it's up to you guys and up to us to bring the story, the, the information out. Everything it's is willing to give the documents, the agencies that they can verify with, so that the Filipinos can make good decisions for Filipinos. Thank you. Uh, la, 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 last question. Uh, she was here the earliest, so we'll give her uh, the mic. Uh, Miss Kathy Cruz from uh, Save. Uh, Miss Kathy Cruz from Save the Nation. Uh, who's uh, chairman, uh, Mr. Bush Valdez, was also our frequent uh, resource expert who left us uh, about a month ago. So we we also. Uh, Author his uh, memory today, uh, Ms. Kathy Cruz. And then uh, one minute closing remarks for each of our uh, experts. What can we look forward to, uh, starting from the youngest member of the panel, uh, Senator Tatat, after uh, Kathy's question? Oh, thank you. Um, well, of course, I am the, aside from being a uh, anchor in this excel every Sunday, 7 to 9. Ang ating katipunan, which actually the show of uh, Pro Professor Valdez and also um, the um, Secretary General of the Katipunan and Democratic Filipino, it's a uh, national political party. Okay, so uh, I'm wearing different hats. But anyway, um, actually, this is actually a statement just to summarize it. I'm looking for uh, ano ba yung move natin forward? Uh, alam natin na nangyayari lahat ko. Well, Philippines today, uh, wait, uh, Filipinos are talented. Sabi nga ni uh, Ma'am Kanina, si Balik Scientist. <laughs> Resourceful and smart. Yet, opportunities are limited. Some government agencies like DOST, uh, um, is doing all means to promote STEM to produce professionals like scientists, engineers, architects, researchers, etc. China took one generation to develop soft and hard infrastructure. Philippines today, public utilities are given away to oligarchs we have loans, actually, and policies like IPIRA and among others to stop government to protect the Filipinos. Um, uh, China, we'll have to go to the question. Yeah. China leaders' uh, goal is uh, to develop or become a producer. Us, our leaders before, until today, except the RRD, is moving towards uh, service economy. Today, Filipinos, Filipino lives are deteriorating. Uh, let us not forget the solution of a long war in Europe. It is the Treaty of Westphalia, moving towards economic development. So meaning, saan ba tayo papunta? Sa gera ba o pagpapaunlad? Just like what China is doing right now and pushing for the sick uh, Silk Road or the Belt and Road Initiative. Tayo bilang nasa Australia, napakahalaga natin sa buong mundo. Tayo yung daanan ng lahat ng mga bansa, yung mga states na yan. So moving forward, gusto ko lang malaman what will be our nakikita yung uh, government move dapat or initiative from your end, from education, from your sector, from businessmen, on what uh, you will uh, do. Kasi may gumagawa na ng mga rallies, pushing for peace, and tinutulak ang agricultural development na. I think the question uh, aligns also with uh, my question earlier. Uh, closing remarks, one to two minutes. What can we expect for the country? Where are we headed? Uh, 
what do you look forward to? Uh, Senator Kit Tatad, would you like to have the mic first? Well, I, I think I tried to say that earlier. The central, central question now is how do I achieve peace? Do we have a plan for peace, a central plan for peace? Uh, initiated or organized by the most important uh, economic power in the world today. I was hoping I'd hear that from the press conference of uh, Premier Richard. I did not. They were very cautious in telling me uh, the lines laid out earlier there, I think. But, uh, uh, we learned a lot from the economic discussion. And I think we should do it uh, more often than uh, we have done so far. But I think ultimately you cannot escape the question that I have raised. We need a modern technology for peace. Uh, just to add, no, uh, because the Premier is uh, administrative, more national issues, uh, the Foreign Minister uh, last week's uh, speech is also uh, a good uh, materials to address that. Uh, Herman? Actually, the answer to Senator Tabat's question was in President Xi Jinping's speech this morning. Yes. So, unfortunately, we're, we're not, we have no more time to review that. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a media who asked, just to cover this, for those who came late, uh, why we covered uh, uh, Premier Li uh, Chang's uh, rather than uh, the Xi Jinping, because uh, Xi Jinping is uh, very broad and uh, all encompassing, comprehensive, so we can, you know, maybe schedule a, another discussion for that. But we wanted to focus on economic and development, which is what yes. our, our country needs. and the expertise of our experts. So we have Dr. Arlene, Ira, and Mr. George C. who will also do the closing remarks as uh, IDSI president. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, we'll have a small gift. We have a small gift because uh, uh, Mr. Carlos Chan of Oishi, who's our partner for today's event, uh, gave enough uh, gift certificates. So we'll uh, priority the media first because they came from far away. And then if we have extras, we'll uh, share them with friends also. There are uh, gift certificates for Jayco that actually came from Indonesia, and uh, we heard from our Indonesian friends. Jayco is a uh, very famous, very uh, popular, beating all the Western uh, brands uh, in uh, donuts and uh, coffee in Indonesia. No? So uh, there's a lot to learn also from our neighbors. Uh, without further ado, Dr. Arlene, Aira, and Pia. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, my last statement. I think uh, from an education perspective again, uh, we have this uh, education and development. Development on what? Development in economy, development in politics. Well, it's good that we have this uh, attempt to join the PISA. We know our place now. It's a good attempt that we have this K-12 curriculum in the past 10 years. It's another good attempt. I think I see the beauty and the, the goodness in every uh, initiatives that our government or the previous government uh, uh, accomplished. Whether the, the whether the result is not good, whether the result is you know, not so good, I think it's a very good learning experience for, for all of us. Now, uh, the, the, uh, the Sir uh, George C. We need, to we need to revisit the curriculum. It's not fitted to entrepreneur. It's not fitted to the talents. It's not fitted to the technology. So I think the things that we have done in the past 10 years or 20 years is a good attempt. But we need to do more. And it should start in education. Because I think when it comes to technology, imagine how long do we need to train our people. When it comes to entrepreneur, how long do we need to train our people? And when it comes to economy, how long do we need to train that? Only education could address a portion, or maybe if not 100% of that issue, more than 50%. We can achieve more through education. Thank you.